Hello and welcome to the series of instructional videos for the third year analytical chem labs. I'm Dr. Robin Studley and this video will be about the instrumental setup for capillary electrophoresis. The instrument we'll look at is the Agilent 7100. What we see today can be applied to other capillary electrophoresis or CE systems. We'll first look at the sample introduction part. The sample and buffer solutions are held in small vials that are placed into the sample tray. The capillary itself is coiled up inside a plastic cassette. Before measurements begin, the sample needs to be introduced into the capillary. Each end of the capillary is submerged into a separate vial. Each vial contains buffer solution and an electrode which is connected to the high voltage supply. Once the capillary is flushed thoroughly with the buffer, the anode end of the capillary is dipped into the sample vial and a small plug of sample solution is forced in using pressure difference. The difference in pressure is established through the elevation of the anode end of the capillary or through the pressurization of the sample vial using a pump. This method of injection creates a plug of sample that has the same composition as in the sample vial. The capillary is placed back into the buffer solution and high voltage is applied. The high voltage applied across the capillary creates the electroosmotic flow and the buffer solution is pushed into the capillary. A potential difference of 10 to 30 kilovolts across the length of the capillary is typical. This creates a strong electric field across the capillary. The capillary is typically coated with a solid silanol phase. The pH of the buffer determines the charge on the wall inside the silica capillary. When the pH is less than 3, the silanol groups of the capillary wall are fully protonated. However, when the pH is greater than 9, the capillary wall is almost completely deprotonated. If the pH is somewhere in between, the wall is partially protonated and partially negatively charged silicon oxide. For a negatively charged capillary wall, cations from the buffer solution are attracted to it, thus forming an electrical double layer. The double layer contains more cations than anions in order to neutralize the negative charge of the wall. In the presence of the applied electric field, this surplus of positive charge at the sides of the capillary will be attracted to the cathode. Solution in the center of the capillary is dragged along in the same direction, and the overall flow is called the electroosmotic flow. The electroosmotic flow carries both the sample and the background electrolyte through the capillary from the anode to the cathode and detector. In addition to this, there is also the electrophoretic flow, which is the migration of cations to the cathode and anions to the anode. Depending on the pH and analyte charge, the electrophoretic flow usually has a small contribution to the ion's overall velocity. Separation of the sample's components is based on their electrophoretic mobility. Those that have a higher electrophoretic mobility constant will move through the capillary faster. The electrophoretic mobility constant of each component is dependent on its charge and size. Highly charged ions will move through the capillary faster than less highly charged ions. Smaller ions will move through the capillary faster than larger ions because they experience less drag. Detection of the components occurs on the capillary. This method of detection is used to avoid extra column band broadening. As seen here, a portion of the capillary is isolated and widened slightly to allow light from the light source to pass through it and reach the detector. This widening improves the detection sensitivity since the path length of the capillary is increased. However, the trade-off for better sensitivity is the loss of peak resolution. The detector here is a UV-Vis diode array detector, which uses a deuterium lamp. Our video about Experiment 4 provides more detail on this kind of diode array detector. I hope this video has been useful for you. If you have any questions, please direct them to me or your TA. And thanks for watching.